He looked up from the glass of wine with wide eyes. Are these wide eyes? Good day everyone and welcome. My name is Ordinero Oli and today we're going to be playing more of Merch of the Living. And we're going to be playing a new game. We're going to be playing Michael. And he is a new character added in a recent DLC from August, I think. We completed all the other characters of Old Faithful Greg and uh, Derek. And of course, our recent, recently completed story of ooh, Blake's. This time, it's going to be Michael. And I can't wait to jump straight back into it. Because apparently, he's got a crossbow. I can't wait to see how that works out. He is an expert in pistol, an intermediate in shotgun, and an intermediate in... <laughs> rifle. Got a little hiccup going on here. And just take a sip of water. There we go. Michael worked at a typical 9 to 5 job in the insurance industry. He lived with his wife, Jenny, in a nice two bedroom apartment and liked to buy items from online stores on impulse. <gasps> Don't we all? His goal is to keep his family safe. Well, that was the goal of every single character here, so nothing new there. We are gonna start, and I'm hoping this story will be epic. It also added some new events that you can apparently encounter, with a 13,000 new words that like make up different stories that you can encounter, so I'm really looking forward to those too. Michael arrived home after a long day at work. He loosened his tie, slipped off his dress shoes, put his keys on the granite counter as he walked toward the living room to watch some TV and order that crossbow online. Jenny was already sitting on the love seat uh, and opened a bottle of wine and a single glass of red wine in front of her. She turns towards him as he enters. What's this all about? Jenny handed him the glass of wine. I have a little surprise. Oh, Michael says, his curiosity peaked took a sip of wine. Remember that discussion we had a while ago when we talked about starting a family? Michael's attention was on the wine. Yeah, but he looked up from the glass of wine with wide eyes. Are these wide eyes? Well, Jenny started to say, Oh my god, you're pregnant! And Jenny smiled, unable to contain her enthusiasm. Yes! Oh god, what? I mean, I'm going to be a father, you're going to be a mother? Michael leaned forward and kissed Jenny passionately. I love you. Jenny looked into his eyes and smiled. I love you too, Michael. And then zombie apocalypse started. Boom! <laughs> Michael picked off the glass and held it in the air as a toast. Here's to our new family. Silly Michael. A glass isn't a toast. It's a glass. Seven months pass. A woman holding a microphone on TV stood in front of a police barricade. They're being called rotters. People who have bitten become infected and become animated after death, seeking to infect others. Authorities are warning people to avoid any corpses they see. There was a furious knock on the door. Marx opens the door and rushes in. Did you guys hear? Yeah, that, he said, pointing at the TV. Jenny looked up. What do you mean? Did you hear something? Mark shook his head. I just know we've got to get out of here. And go where? Mark leaned against the wall, catching his breath. A friend of mine at the hospital said they're setting up a clean zone out of the edge of town. They'll take, they'll, they'll take a pregnant woman. Yeah, cool. Michael looks at Jenny. What about you and me, Mark? They'll take us too, if we're with her. The three fell silent for a moment, then Jenny spoke up. I want to go. I don't want to stay here. I can't deal with it if we're trapped here. Let's go then. Oh shit, a lot more text. Okay. A month passed in the camp. Oh, okay. Michael returns with daily rations. Old man Mills passed away today. Jenny looks up. He wasn't doing very well. Michael hands the package out, giving the larger one to Jenny. Jenny tears into the food and eats hungrily. His family was upset that they didn't get their extra ration. They claim someone poisoned him. Mark sets his ration down on the table. I've heard people grumbling that Jenny gets one of the large packages. packages. Lots of jealousy. I overhear people saying she doesn't deserve the extra food. I've heard people saying that. Jenny looks. Holy shit, there's a lot of text here. <laughs> Jenny looks up from her food, her eyes beaming with tears. I know, uh, I don't think I'm safe here anymore. Mark nods. People are frustrated. Someone might do something stupid. Michael sits down in the bed. So, what do we do? Mike leans forward. I think I know a spot we can use to hide out. Michael frowns. Will it be safe? Safer than here, probably. No people, no jealousy. 
Michael falls silent, watching Jenny for a moment. What do you want, dear? Jenny looks away for a moment, takes a breath, then looks at Michael. I want to leave. Michael nods and gets a determined look on his face. Okay, let's go. Mark looks around and says, Not now, let's wait until midnight or night. Leave under cover darkness. Michael nods. Okay, where is this safe place? Just a little bit out of town, a cabin, fully stocked with supplies. We can deliver the child. Okay, we'll leave at nightfall. Woo! Finally, some action. Okay, so that's Michael, that's Jenny, and that's our dude, Mark. So, what's gonna happen now? We can travel to cities, which we couldn't do with Blake, the last guy apparently, so that's a relief. And we just gotta make it down to the supplies or the cabin there. How much do we have already? Three food rations, 16 bullets, that's definitely not gonna be enough. Do our other people have some weapons? He's got an old revolver. He's got an old semi-automatic pistol and a police platoon. Uh, there's no real reason to go up here, because then we have to go down anyway to get down to the quest marker. So we are going to go down here, and then we're going to visit that city, because then we're already going down. Right? Good. Fast forward a little bit. So, so far, it looks pretty good. I want to see if we get some new scenarios already. After wandering for some time, spot a small, single-story house off in the distance. You walk towards it, noting that blinds are blocking your view inside, and that the front door seems to have been boarded up. Garbage is piling up outside, looking closely you determine that it must have been placed recently. Some infected are shambling nearby, but you pay them no attention. Check inside the house, walk away. I'm fairly sure that this is a new scenario, I'm gonna see what happens if we check inside. You decide to head inside, finding an unlocked door around the back. Weapon draw, you enter the house as quietly as you can. Search, search for the search for the cupboard for supplies. Okay, <laughs> unfortunately, it seems it's been cleared out already. There is nothing to be found. You creep into the house's front room and are met by two sleeping humans, a couple by a reckoning. Luckily, they have yet to notice you as they are facing the opposite direction. A small backpack, no doubt filled with canned food or ammo, is laying on the ground near them. Steal the backpack or leave. Steal the backpack or leave quietly. I'm gonna leave quietly because I don't want to steal people's shit. I'm not, I don't want to do that. Sneak back to the way you came. Seems like a good idea not to involve yourself in this house any further. Plus, you never know what those people are going to do. And actually, I don't think that was a new scenario. I think I've, we've had that before. So, that wasn't new. But anyway, we can finally search cities. I've been missing this. Let's search... Well, let's just search everything, really. I want to see how the crossbow works if we get to a uh, fight anyway. So, let's just check around. We were lucky there. Rifle bullets, shotgun bullets, and a bandage. It's gonna come in handy. Hospital. Search the shit out of that place. Search every single thing. Yep, encounter. Okay, let's check out this crossbow here. Uh, Michael? Like, aim at the head. Okay. So. Oh, okay. It's really quick to fire. Whoa. Oh, we need to reload every time? Uh, oh, shit. It takes some time to reload, actually. Oh, I don't like that. Okay. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Shoot it. Nice. And then reload to check out the other. Oh, sh okay. There was still a zombie behind me. I didn't see that. Boop. It's really good, though. And Michael. Take out the last guy there. Nice. I don't know. Crossbow bolts. Okay, so it doesn't use bullets. It's shotgun bullets. It's a rifle bullet, of course. It uses shotgun bolts. And we can see them there. We don't have. Much left, we have four left, so that's something we need to take care of. Luckily, we've got two bandages there. Let's just search this entire place, also. Hopefully, we won't get in a fight. Lucky us. Plus, food rations, we could use those. We're running really low. Start out with three, that's not enough. That's like if, if, if we just use them now, then we would be having no sort of food rations left. I don't want to search this. 100% so I'm just gonna search a little for four fruit rations. Holy shit. We're on a roll here guys and The last place just want to search that a little too, you know, just to get around the entire place for crossbow cool That's another crossbow and Then we can travel on Oh shit just stop here uh, Everyone can just rest and then we'll eat when you wake up 
to save some food. Everyone can eat. There we go. Does Jenny eat a lot? I think she does. Character. Pregnant. Reduces speed. Increases hunger. Yeah. Increases fatigue. Okay. So she is fairly weak. We'll have to take that into consideration. A wooden sign with bright yellow lettering along the road reads, Happy Dan's Camping Supplies. Jenny points at the sign. Maybe you can find some supplies there. That is a new scenario. I am 110% sure of that. You can't hurt to check. It's been months. It's probably looted clean. You can't hurt to check. The group follows the path through the wood to a small convenience store. The doors are shut and the window is intact. Jenny bounces in place. Maybe we'll find some pickles in there. Pickles. I have a craving. I can't help it. Let's go. And finally, check it out. Michael enters the doorway, goes inside the store, finding a light switch. He flips on the light. Inside most of the shelves are mostly bare and covered with dust. But in the corner is a large jar of pickles. <laughs> oh my god, pickles! Jenny squeals. I'm craving those so bad, please let me have them. Fine, you can have them, we should save them for the scars. You can have them. Michael sighs. Fine, take them. He goes and grabs a few other items off the shelves. Jenny grabs the jar and lowers herself to the floor. She twists off a little with a satisfying boop and starts munching on the pickles. A few minutes pass, Jenny has a satisfied look on her face with one pickle still floating in the brine. On the last one, you can have it. Let's go. Well, that was a nice scenario. Really, really fucking calm, actually. <laughs> okay, so I see that we actually got quite a bit away before we reached that quest mark there, which is the cabin with the supplies that we need to go to. And I'm guessing something will happen there. So we have to, well, in the end, make it all the way to the end of Sector 3. As always, I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you leave a like. And if you want to see more, leave a like too, because then I'll know you want to see more. <laughs> but most importantly, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to share this video also, that'd be great. And subscribe, of course, if you haven't done already. Bye-bye.